So I pose a question to you. Looking at these three pictures, what's the difference? Well, on the surface, it appears there's nothing. But if we peer behind the hood, there are actually three separate setups within our HTML code. The first one is set up in a more traditional way, dating back to the 1990s. Then we're going to look at a better way of setting up with a newer image format with letter B. And the third one is like the B's knees. It's even a better way of setting your image for accessing the most browsers around the world. I want to show you how each one's formatted so you can learn the good, better, and best way of displaying images on the web. The first thing we have to do is we have to save our photo. So I've got a mammoth picture I took the other day, and it's a big, giant photograph. I'm going to pull up my image size, and it's 4,000 by 2,600, way too big for the web. So we compress our images. We should always make sure we're saving it down to the size we need it at. I'm going to drop it down to 1,000 pixels. There we go. We'll just have it right there. And our first step is I want to save it as a traditional JPEG. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say save as, and in here, I'm going to go to my, well, I named it backwards. Should name this one start, but anyways, I'm going to come up and go to the JPEG file and say format JPEG, click on save, and let's rock this thing at a size of 944 kilobytes, optimal quality 12. This is the best JPEG we're going to get. We say, okay. That's the file for davenport.jpg, but I also want to take it to a smaller file size if I can. Now, I've never been a fan of the JPEG compression size because to me, if we look at it, so if we call this one JPEG smaller, this whole number going here from 1 to 12 never made sense to me. And Photoshop fixed this with their save for web. It's actually export now, but if we go to file, export and then if we then go into export as the safer web is still there and i still use it by wording but export as is what i want this is equally one of the worst keyboard shortcuts i've ever found on the mac it's command option shift s and the new one is now command option shift w no they did not make it easier so if i hit command option shift w what I get, I have a different screen apparently over here, is I get this export as. This to me makes a little more sense. One to seven and it shows low to high and it also shows me the size that I'm working with. I'm gonna work with the JPEG. I'm gonna drop this down about a four. And now we have a much better size than 184 kilobytes. So I'm gonna say export. And what I'll do is, let's go to the finish. I have it backwards today. I'm gonna say Davenport smaller file size, dash size, and JPEG, and there we go. The JPEG's good, but there's another format that's even better, and that's the WebP format. Let's go up here, and we have to do it. It's not available in that export function we just saw. What I have to do is come back to save as, or on the Mac, command option or command shift S. And here's what I wanna do is I wanna come down to the format and I'm recording this in 2022 and it's now built into Photoshop. Awesome. We now have the WebP format. If you've never heard of the WebP format, you have now heard of the WebP format. The WebP format was developed by Google. And they basically said, we want to create an image format that is a lower in file size, but retains the quality of JPEGs. Oh, and because it's Google, we're going to make sure it works on all of our Google browsers. Hallelujah. The Davenport is now going to be .webp for the extension file. And I say save. And if we go to our WebP options, I can drop this pretty low. This is awesome. And another thing as well, I love how they use the 100 point scale in the WebP options right here. I can take this down pretty low. I've been very impressed with how low I can take the WebP and still have the image look fantastic. I'm going to say OK. And now what I get as a result, if I pull open my finish folder and we look at these file sizes, they just keep getting smaller and smaller. 
That traditional way, which we're going to use in our project, is 954 kilobytes. We then have a smaller file size, which is 189 kilobytes. Then we drop nearly 100K off of this and use the WebP. So let's go and build A, B, and then we're going to look at C as well and show you what's the good, the better, and the best way of using these three files. All right, so I am back in Visual Studio Code and running a live server up in Chrome. To get started in that traditional way, we're gonna bring in the picture. So I'm gonna bring in inside this P tag, I'm gonna say image source equals, I actually still use a period slash for my pictures. I'm gonna bring in that Davenport smaller file size dot JPG. I'm also gonna say alt equals Davenport to give it the proper alt information. I'm also going to add an image fluid tag. This HTML is actually brought in through Bootstrap and Bootstrap has a really great function inside a class to say IMG fluid. And in there, what it'll do is it'll make the picture fluid. I'll give it a width of 600 for right now and I'll close up this picture. Boom. Just so you can tell if I didn't have the image fluid, and I take it out, the picture would go outside the space of this grid within Bootstrap. Let's drop back in the class. This looks good. However, the JPEG, if you think about file sizes, is still pretty big at 189 kilobytes. What I wanna do is do a better way, and if I can bring in this same image, but it be 985, 95 kilobytes, that's what I prefer to do. So the traditional way is good, but the better way if I come down to B is I wanna say image source, and I'm gonna bring in the Davenport.webp format, give it again, in fact, I'm gonna copy and paste this alt class and six to make it much easier. Everything else will be the same, Davenport alt class width, and now what I have is a better way. But here's the thing. While the WebP is good, it doesn't work on all browsers. If we take a look at this fantastic website called caniuse.com, and I have the slash WebP, can I use the WebP format for all browsers? And the answer is almost yes. We can forget about IE because it's essentially dead. Ed, Ed. <laughs> Edge supports it, of course, along with Chrome. The one holdout, which is almost all the way there, is Safari. Safari has partial support, and as it says, it has partial support, let me move this up a little bit, has partial support in Safari being limited to Mac OS 11 Big Sur and later. Now this is says 0% here, this one has a 0.1% global, so these versions of Safari, they're all becoming more and more adoptive of the WebP format. However, I'm always nervous that if this is an important image, I don't want to leave someone with a broken image. So I want to create an even better way of displaying the WebP format. If we come back to our project, hello world, what I want to do is I want to write a in an even better way in my code. So that way, if people have an older browser, mainly Safari nowadays, that they cannot see the photograph, we have to create a backup plan. So I'm gonna do is inside this P tag, I'm gonna say picture. The pick, not picked. That was not the way I wanted it to go as it turns out. Let's say picture. Picture's an actual tag and what we can do is we can add multiple images within the picture tag. So I'm gonna first say source, and in this source set, I'm gonna say source set, S-E-T, equals, and I'm gonna add the davenport.webp, davenport.webp, there we go. And in here, the type is going to be an image slash web piece. We tell the browser what the heck it is. The next source we can also put in here is the JPEG. We can create a fallback. So in case those older browsers, mainly those Safari users, 
that had an older operating system can actually see the photograph. So we're gonna say source and source set equals Davenport, but this one's gonna be JP, did I, didn't spell it right. There we go. And this type is going to be image slash JPEG. Now the thing we also have to do is we have to bring in the image file in case all else fails, which we then repeat back as the Davenport JPEG. I'm gonna say image source, and this one I'm gonna make sure I don't type it incorrectly. So the Davenport goes there, and just like before, I'm gonna grab the alt, class, and width as well in here. This gives us a fallback. Let's make sure I close the image tag. This gives us a fallback, so in case our user cannot, whoa, hello, in case our user cannot see the WebP. And again, if we look at the WebP, it's only becoming more in terms of the older Safari browsers, but I still think that if I use the WebP, I want a fallback to make sure the person can always see the picture. And so now I have the web, whoa, come back here. I've got the WebP, but I also have the JPEG using this picture. 